Hey everybody, it's Joe, the 3D printing professor, with a quick Cura slicing tip for you today. Let's say that you download a 3D print file, but that 3D print file doesn't just have one part, but it has multiple parts in it. Oh, like say for instance, a plate of printer blocks. In my last printer block Kickstarter, the Beast Kickstarter, before that one I realized you know, it would help people if instead of just throwing a bunch of blocks at them, I maybe organized things so that they could just, just choose a couple of files, two or three or four prints, and have enough blocks to be able to make something. So I, I made these plates, and these plates included the parts that you would need as well as some connectors to put them together because the connectors are a very important part of printer blocks. Now this particular set that we're looking at here, if you put it all together, will make a printer block UFO from the upcoming printer block Skyblock set. Now you might look at a UFO and think, why is that so exciting? What is it, flying saucer? Who cares? Well, remember these are printer blocks, and when you're done printing and building this, you have parts that you can take apart and put together in a different way. Can you think of a spaceship that has a saucer-like component to it that you might want to build out of printer blocks? That's what this is about. It's not about the kit. It's about having the parts to build the things that you do want to build. And so that's what this kit is. But for me, I find that these connectors actually print better when I print them separately. I just enjoy putting them all on one plate and printing uh, right now I'm printing like 196 of them all at once and I'm printing them successfully when I print them just the connectors but for some reason when I print them as part of the plate sometimes they don't work as well and one falls off and it becomes a cascade problem and it's just a mess so I would rather turn off the connectors on the plates now here's the problem Cura doesn't have anything in it that enables you to take a model and break it into its component parts. Now, Prusa Slicer does do that, although you have to be careful in Prusa Slicer because some of the printer block components, like the hinges on the arms or the pivots, I have another example of a pivot block. I put a, I put a shoulder on the printer benchy so that I could put a spinny part on it for no good reason other than the fact that it's fun. But yeah, we have these hinge parts in printer block and they are separate bodies that print nestled together. And so if you check the option that says reposition things after you break them apart, Prusa Slicer might take these ones that need to be held together and separate them. So make sure in that case that you have the option that says break them apart, but don't move them, leave them where they are. But Cura, doesn't have that setting. However, Cura does have a very clever way that you can turn off part of your print, and I'm going to show that to you now. So let's start by grabbing the, well, first of all, clicking on the model that you want to print. And I'm just going to really quickly review my settings here. Now, for printer blocks, we turn off supports. Printer blocks always print without needing any supports whatsoever. I like the layer height and everything. Infill is looking pretty good. Basically, that's the only setting you have to worry about in printer block is turn off supports. Then go over to the support blocker option. There's a, there's a tool over there that says support blocker. Now you might think, well, we're not trying to block supports. We just turned off supports entirely. Well, bear with me for a second. Click on your model and it will add a block and that block, as you may know, blocks supports from being generated there. But it's also a block. And we can use it in a very clever way. Now, the first thing I want to do is select just the block, go over to my scale, and turn off uniform scaling so that I can scale it in just the X. Whoops, that was way too much. How did I do that even? All right, just the X. Here we go. Whoa, calm down. My Cura is acting weird. Apparently, it doesn't like to be straight up from the top. All right, that's about the right size. Now I'm going to move just a block and move it so that it completely... Oh, it's too high. Got to move it down. There we go. It in completely engulfs the part that I don't want to 3D print. Now, what you have to do 
is go over here to the per model settings and open that menu up. Now the per model settings, uh, well, there's a couple of options. Most of the time it's in normal mode, which is to say that that block prints as a block, but we can also take that block and print it as support. Now this is kind of fun and cool. You can actually take any 3D model that you want and print it as supports, which makes it this kind of like flimsy sort of thing. It's kind of cool looking, but that's not what we're doing today. Instead, what we're doing, instead of having it be a support blocker, which is don't support overlaps for where it overlaps another model, we are going to do modify settings for overlaps. Now you might already know about this, but if you don't, you can have an object overlapping another object and where it overlaps, it will change the settings for that part and it's super cool now in this case we want to change it from infill mesh only to cut mesh and essentially this is how we break things apart but when we break it apart we can't delete it but we can change the settings of it and what settings are we going to change open up select settings and find wall thickness that's the first one also find top and bottom thickness. That's the second one. And then infill density, close that out and then change all those to zero, zero wall thickness. Did you know that you could 3d print something and have zero wall thickness and have it just print as infill? It's super cool. Top and bottom zero. Did you know that you could 3d print something with the walls and the infill, but no top or bottom. So you can see into the infill of a print. It's absolutely cool. Also infill density zero. Now what happens if a model prints and there's, there's no walls and there's no top and bottom layers and there's no infill what's left to 3d print on that model? Well, the answer is nothing. And I'm going to go ahead and show you that as soon as we can get to the preview. So let it process the layers and there you go. Take a look. That part of our print does not manifest in the print. No walls, no infill, no shell. We have effectively turned off that part of the print. And that is the way in Cura that you can print nothing. If you want to print nothing out of the somethings that you have there. So there you go. Now, I hope that this helps you. I hope that this opens your eyes to some other possibilities and maybe you have some ideas for crazy possibilities that you could use this for to do not just turning off a part, but maybe making that part print differently than the rest. This is a super cool tool. This is like advanced mode for Cura, but now that you know it, Ooh, imagine the possibilities. Well, I hope that this helps you. I hope that you are excited for the upcoming new printer block sets that are coming out. And if you are watching this in the far future and this Kickstarter has already ended, never fear. You can still go and download them on 3dpprofessor.com or there are free models available on printables. So you can go check those out, but there you go. I thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.